Well, back to our top story now. Egypt's former president, Hosni Mubarak, appeared in court today denying charges of murder and corruption. Mubarak's lawyer, Farid al-Dib, said he wants to summon more than 1,600 witnesses in this case. They would include Mohammed Hussein Tantawi, who's the head of the military council that's currently running the country. And also on the list is former Vice President Omar Suleiman. The state prosecutor, Mustafa Suleiman, accused Mubarak of having the intention to kill peaceful protesters during Egypt's revolution. About 850 people did die during the unrest. And lawyers for the families of those who were killed and injured were also at the trial, and they put forward demands on behalf of their clients. Those demands include the death penalty for the defendants and compensation for the victims. Our, uh, our guest is Tarek Osman, author of Egypt on the Brink, from Nasser to Mubarak. He joins me now from Cairo. Thank you for being with us. You've traced an arc from Nasser to Mubarak. What's the trajectory post-Mubarak, do you think, following what you've seen in the courts today? Well, basically, we'll, um, we'll see a continuation of, of the struggle between the liberal movement in Egypt, the Islamic movement in Egypt, and the military in the background. And I think the, uh, the trial of today will, will prove to be more or less a, a sideshow, really. You don't think that the, the symbolism of Mubarak in that cage, lying on his back, um, the, the, the prisoner of the people, uh, was necessarily enough to swing this whole revolution behind a, a more democratic, a, a future-looking Egypt? I think it will certainly prove to be a watershed in, in the history of this country and certainly a major milestone for the Egyptian revolution. But. Um, I also believe that it will be a, a cathartic process, if you'd like, throughout its, its long proceedings for Egyptian society to face many of the ills that has afflicted uh, Egypt over the past few decades. But whether it will have any major bearing on the shape of Egypt in the next five or ten years, um, I don't think it will have that massive influence. Well, what will? I mean, the, the country is clearly in a state of flux uh, and to a certain extent a state of chaos. Something needs to develop and, uh, and harden into a new system. How, how would that system look to you, do you think? Currently, you're seeing a number of forces in Egypt. You're seeing the, the structural side of the old regime, which is basically the military, obviously trying to ensure stability in the country. You have uh, many forces that you can amalgamate together under the Islamic movement in Egypt, which have the largest representation or the, or the largest constituency on the Egyptian street. And that is a major contender, of course, for the future, whether from, from the very conservative side of that movement or to the more liberal side of that movement. And then you have many other forces that effectively ask for a secular state or non-religious state, which are together being called the liberals. And mm. I think the interaction between all of those, not necessarily in the elections that will come in the next two months, but in general over the buy-in of the Egyptian middle class, that is, I think, what will shape uh, the future of this country. One quick question. How do you see um, the allegiances changing? I mean, from Nasser to Mubarak, we saw uh, a nationalist president um, and one who was more interested in the will of the Arab world, I guess, to Mubarak, who took it very much to the Western side and uh, seemed to align himself with the powers on the West. Do you think that um, the next Egyptian regime, the next Egyptian government and presidency, uh, will align itself East or West? I mean, if, if you look backwards slightly, you'll see that Egypt basically had two or actually three experiments. Arab liberalism, Egyptian liberalism before even Nasser, and that was very much Western oriented as well. Then Arab nationalism under Nasser, which was obviously uh, very pan-Arabic and more or less defined itself in, in opposition to Western interests in this part of the world. And then it was Sadat, actually, not Mubarak, who shifted Egypt's um, orientation towards becoming a pillar of, of the American alliance in the Middle East. Mubarak continued that, and I think he added also the Israeli aspect. He became a close friend almost to, to Israel, especially in the last 10 years. I'll go back to the point about the Egyptian middle class. I think the Egyptian middle class in the next five or 10 years will be orienting more towards a nationalist um, strategic orientation for Egypt. Not necessarily similar to the one we saw in the 60s under Nasser, but certainly not pro-America. I think we'll see uh, the development of a new Egyptian 
project um, that is very different from what we have seen over the past 20 or 30 years. All right, there we will leave it. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us.